Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. We are almost at the end of June, which means it's time for mid-year check-ins, and I am going to be doing a more thorough mid-year check-in where I talk about the best reads and the worst reads of 2021 so far, but I thought this would be a fun time to do the mid-year book freakout tag because it's a fun way of doing a mid-year check-in. There are some questions about it that think a little bit differently than just a standard best of and worst of the year so far. I've done it two years in a row and I will link both of my previous versions down below in the description box if you'd like to check them out. It's just a fun thing to do and I enjoy doing it and people seem to enjoy it as well. So why not do it? It was started by Is That Cami, who I believe is no longer on YouTube, but I feel like I should mention that. Let's get into the prompts for this. Now again, because I am going to be doing a video specifically about the best reads of 2021 so far and the worst reads of 2021 so far, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the best books or the worst books and some of those things. You're just going to have to stay tuned for that. I'll be working on that video a little bit later this week. But the first prompt is, of course, what is the best book you've read so far in 2021? The answer is The Yield by Tara June Winch. This is something that I read for Aussie April. It was a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac, and we both just absolutely loved it. I am not going to talk about the books that are in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth place, although I do have my ranking for those pretty well set. Again, you're just going to have to stay tuned. But this one is the clear number one for me. I had this big emotional reaction to it. Because even though it is set in Australia and really deals with the indigenous experience in Australia, it feels very resonant to the way indigenous people have been treated here in the United States. And right after I finished the book, I had to go to a reservation for a funeral for my foster son. And while we were there, the experience that we had on the reservation really hammered in a lot of the points that this book makes. And I'm going to be thinking about it for a long time. It also is an extremely beautiful cover. And the way the cover ties back to the plot of the book and what Tara June Winch is trying to do with the book, I think is just beautiful. And I think it's going to be very difficult for anything to unseat this book. However, I thought I pretty much knew what my number one read of 2021 was going to be in January. And I thought it would be a really hard feet for anything to overtake that, and two books <laughs> ended up getting ahead of that book. I'll say no more on that topic. But what is my favorite read of 2021 so far? Absolutely, The Yield by Tara June Winch. And I'll have more to say on that later. Prompt number two is, what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021? By default, I have to go with a Sue Grafton book, G is for Gumshoe, because other than Sue Grafton, I haven't read any sequels this year. Nothing even approaching a sequel. I enjoy Sue Grafton books, so I don't want to denigrate it by saying that by default, except it is by default because it's the only one. So this is kind of my comfort reading. That's exactly why I picked it up earlier in the year. And here we are. It's the only sequel that I've read so far this year. Prop number three is new release you have not read yet but want to. So I went back and looked at my most anticipated reads of 2021. I will link that video in the description box down below as well. And went through the ones that have been released and the ones that I have not managed to read yet. And what I came up with was Gay Bar, Why We Went Out by Jeremy Atherton Lynn. I think one thing that makes this one in particular stand out among the ones that I haven't had a chance to read yet is that there was another book on there, which I'll talk about in a different prompt, that... I thought was going to fit a certain need and ended up not. And that need is that it was go going to talk about sort of the transition in gay social life over the last 20 years, particularly since marriage equality and how that has changed and how things have stayed the same. And the other book didn't do that for me, but I want to get it from Gay Bar, Why We Went Out Now. And because I didn't get it from the other book, I think that presses the urgency onto this one uh, so I can hopefully get it or scratch that itch. I will say, however, that I did just get a book from the library that was on that list that I am very intrigued by. It's Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. But if I had to pick one, I'd say I'm more excited to get to Gay Bar. 
I am still excited about this. I've read every Jhumpa Lahiri book that has been published, so this one is not going to be the exception. And I did just get it from the library, so there's that as well. Prop number four is, what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? Now, I'm still working on my video that will cover new releases that are coming later this year, because when I did a video in January, which again is linked down below, there were not a whole lot of releases for the second half of 2021. However, I looked at the ones that I had covered in that video, and one of them was Fight Night by Miriam Taves, which actually has a jacket and a release date now, October 5th. And I think that is a book that I'm really looking forward to, and of the ones that have not been released yet from my most anticipated books video that I did earlier this year, that's the one that I would be most at excited about. I have really enjoyed the books of Miriam Taves that I have read so far, and I hope that this one will not be any exception. Prop number five, biggest disappointment. This is possibly going to cause some controversy, but when I think disappointment, I start thinking about something that I was really looking forward to and anticipated would deliver and then didn't. And for me, that's Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. I was really looking forward to this book. I fully anticipated that this was going to be one of my favorite reads of the year, and it ended up just being fine. And given that I absolutely loved the other two books by Kazuo Ishiguro that I've read, which were Never Let Me Go and The Remains of the Day, it felt like a market drop. Now, I know I am in the minority about this book. There are a lot of people who have read this and enjoyed it and really liked it, and that is great. It was not for me, and it felt like... It's very different from Never Let Me Go, but it does feel like I would rather tell people to read Never Let Me Go because I got more out of that than I did from this. And it's not that it's a bad book, but it is that I had so much anticipation going into it that it is the biggest disappointment of the year so far. I do have some other ones that I want to mention in this category. There was Let's Get Back to the Party by Zach Sala. That is the one that I mentioned in the previous prompt. It is about two different gay men in the wake of marriage equality looking at their lives. And one of them wants to settle down and feels frustrated that he doesn't have anybody in his life. And the other friend feels that gay people who are settling down are selling out to a heteronormative ideal of culture and we should just kind of get back to the way things were. And I just did not like the book. I thought that both characters were unlikable in a very uninteresting way, and I wasn't really getting anything out of it. And I think that conversation is really interesting because gay social life has drastically changed over the last 20 years, whereas before you didn't have options to settle down and get married and have a life like that. Now you do, although that does seem to be in peril because the Supreme Court recently decided that Catholic adoption agencies have the right to deny gay couples. It does feel very much in threat, and the way in which this book seemed to be approaching that conversation seemed overly negative about the current state, and maybe as somebody who is part of a gay marriage and also has a foster son, I feel like some of the advancements that we've made are good things, and that was disappointing, especially considering that this was one of my most anticipated books of the year. The other one I have to mention is Edinburgh by Alexander Chi. I just recently finished this, and I do feel bad because I really aggressively disliked the last 100 pages of this, and somebody commented to say that Alexander Chi has sort of explained that this was a very personal journey for him, and he has talked about the difficulty he had because of that, finishing the book. And I understand that. However, I just think everything in the last hundred pages really did not work, at least for me. And I really did not like the direction that it took. So I sympathize with his pain, but I just don't think it worked. So I feel bad putting this here but I just don't think it worked, and that's the way it is. The next prompt, number six, is what is the biggest surprise of the year so far? And I have three books that I'm gonna talk about, but the other two were on my most anticipated reads of 2021, so they weren't really surprises. The surprise is that I liked them as much as I did. The book that was the biggest flat-out surprise is The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott. 
And the reason this is such a surprise is that it's a very different type of book for me. It is probably not a premise I would have picked up on my own. This was recommended to me by Charlie from the Montana Book Company. And I admit, I did pick it up because they have a bingo card that they're doing for 2021. And one of the prompts is choose a book by the cover. So as soon as Charlie pulled it off the shelf, I knew that this was going to tick that box for me. However, once they started explaining what the book was about, I was sold even harder. And I don't really do a lot of sci-fi and fantasy. So this was a bit of a stretch for me. And I just loved it. And I immediately went out and ordered Robbie Arnott's other book, Flames. And considering how much of a struggle I sometimes have with sci-fi and fantasy, this was everything I wanted. It is such a good book, really well written. And I'm really looking forward to more from Robbie Arnott in the future. And I can't wait. So this is the biggest out and out surprise, just because it was a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And it was a huge payoff for that. One of the other ones I want to talk about here is The Bad Muslim Discount by Syed M. Masood. This is one of the titles that was part of my most anticipated releases of 2021, so it's not altogether a surprise that I liked it, but I was surprised by how deeply I liked it. This book is so funny, and the dramatic parts of it resonate so deeply, and it talks about a lot of really complicated issues in a very accessible and funny way. And I really like the characters, and this is definitely something I'm going to be thinking about for a long, long time. And no spoilers, this is in my top five reads of the year so far. I won't say where. And actually, so is The Rain Heron. But I really enjoyed this a lot. And I knew I was going to like it, but I just didn't think I was going to love it as much as I do. And the same is true of The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton, because this was also one of my most anticipated releases. But... I didn't expect it to be as profound as it was, and it moved in some unexpected directions. It is an oral history that's supposed to be about the duo of the title and how they created a classic album and then broke apart and went on their separate ways in their careers. But it ends up being a deeply resonant story about race in America and in the music industry and just celebrity in general and who we believe and who we give the benefit of the doubt and who we allow to create the version of a story that we see as fact over time. And what we do with people who are a little bit unapologetic about flying in the face of that. And I really loved it for that. I do think it's not a perfect book. It has a little bit of flaws, but I really loved it and its message a lot. So that is another one you'll be hearing about when I do my favorite reads of the year so far. And that kind of leads into prompt number seven, which is your favorite new author debut or new to you. And I don't know that there's any new to me author that I've read in 2021 that I am there yet in terms of calling them a favorite author. However, there are authors that are new to me that I can't wait to explore further. The first one, of course, being Robbie Arnott, because as I mentioned, I already ordered his other book, Flames. And if I really like that one, he is probably going to be an author that will be an instant purchase for me when they release a new book. And that would be exciting to have. The next one is Robert Jones Jr., who wrote The Prophets. And I really like this book. It was his debut novel, so I don't know where he's going to go from here, but I am going to be extremely interested in whatever he does next and really looking forward to reading his next book. So we'll have to see if he ultimately becomes a favorite author of mine. The next one, naturally, is Tara June Winch, who wrote The Yield, because this is my favorite read of the year so far, but I haven't read anything else of hers, and I really want to do that. And depending on how those go, she could end up being an author that I follow or, and a new favorite, so there's certainly potential there. And of course, Syed M. Masood, because I am extremely interested in seeing what he does next and where his creative mind takes him. And I would definitely go on a roller coaster with him all over again. So he could potentially be a new favorite author as well. Potential for favorite author, nothing is confirmed right now, if that makes sense. <laughs> Prop number eight is one that I don't really like every single year. It's your newest fictional crush. I don't really do fictional crushes. I can't think of any fictional character I've ever really had a crush on. So 
I almost never have an answer for this. Here's what I'm thinking for this one. If I look at all the books that I've read in 2021, the character that I would most want to give a hug, just because I feel like they could use it, is Wallace from Real Life by Brandon Taylor. Just because the situation that he goes through in this book is so resonant and powerful and the things he goes through are, are such BS in so many ways. Like, he deserves better in a lot of ways. And he's so sad because of it. And I just want to give him a hug. And I can't tell him that everything will be better because we live in a society where that kind of thing happens all the time and it's not getting better. But maybe it would help somehow. I don't know. <laughs> the next prompt, number nine, is that your newest favorite character. And I don't really have a favorite. I don't think there's any character in any of these books that is going to be an all-time favorite. However, I think certainly the most indelible characters, plural, are Anvar and Safwa from The Bad Muslim Discount. Because both of them are experiencing very different journeys in this book. And yet their stories complement each other so well. And for a white man in the United States who is not a Muslim, it opened my eyes to a lot of different things and caused me to question a lot of different things. And I'm going to be thinking about what they went through for a very long time, particularly Safwa in that regard. Anvar is a much more indelible and funny character and Safwa was much more of an eye-opener. So I can't separate one from the other. It's got to be a duo and it's got to be Anvar and Safwa. Prompt number 10 is book that made you cry or the saddest book you have read. Without question, that's The Prettiest Star by Carter Sickles. And I think the fact that we are on prompt number 10 and I haven't mentioned The Prettiest Star yet really goes to show you what a quality year of reading it is for me so far. I really enjoyed this book and it's only coming up now, however far into this video we are right now. It's a really profound story of a man living with and dying of AIDS in the 1980s. It's about his family's struggle, and it's about the stigma of HIV and AIDS, which still exists today in a lot of ways. And I cried. I cried a lot. It used to be true that not many books made me cry. It feels like it happens more and more often, but I, this is the only book I can think of this year that has made me cry. And with good reason, it is a spectacular book. Prompt number 11, book that made you happy. I think the easiest answer for this one is Camp by Elsie Rosen, which I actually just finished yesterday. It's a young adult romantic comedy set at a queer summer camp. And I just love that something like that exists. If this had existed when I was a teenager, I would have had a lot less problems accepting who I am. Maybe. We'll never know, for sure. But I think that's part of what makes me so happy, that there's this book marketed toward a young adult audience that is sex positive, gender affirming, sexuality affirming, and embraces all different types of lifestyles and yet acknowledges the difficulty that they face. This camp is a safe haven for them and a place to get away from the stigmas and prejudices that they face in the regular world. And yet, Everybody carries their baggage with them to camp and you start to create hierarchies of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and they still have to deal with that. And throughout, it remains a pretty joyous read, even though it deals with some pretty heavy conversations and pretty heavy things in society. And for that, I am just happy that this book exists and therefore it is the book that has made me the happiest in 2021 so far, at least. Prop number 12, your favorite book to film adaptation you saw this year. It has to be Nomadland by Jessica Bruder. I saw the movie, I wanna say way back in January, and then I read the book and I did a book to film comparison, which I will link in the description box down below if you would like to check it out. I think it's particularly interesting as a book adaptation as well because Nomadland by Jessica Bruder is a nonfiction book in which Jessica Bruder is very much a character investigating and getting to know the nomads. And for the movie, they created a fictional character that embodies a lot of the things that are in the book. And there was controversy about whether or not the movie sold out on Amazon because the book is very critical of Amazon and other companies that exploit nomadic or seasonal workers. And 
if you want to know a lot more about that, I just recommend you check out my book versus movie comparison because I really get into it there. But I loved both the book and the movie. And it's also really the only film adaptation where I've both read the book and seen the movie in the same year. The runner up doesn't quite qualify for that. That's a single man by Christopher Isherwood, which I also just recently finished. And I really loved this book, but it's been over a decade since I saw the movie. The movie was released in 2009. I saw it when it came out on video, pretty quickly after it came out on video, and I have not seen it since. Part of me would love to run out and see the movie and do a book to movie comparison, but I don't think I'm gonna be doing that anytime soon, which means it'll probably be ineligible because I only like to do those comparisons when I have both watched the movie and read the book recently. However, I do think there's a great adaptation there. It just doesn't quite qualify because I read the book but didn't see the movie this year. Prop number 13, what is your favorite review you have written this year? Booktube version, what is your favorite video you have done so far this year? Actually, I just mentioned it. It's my Nomadland book versus movie comparison, which again is in the description box down below. I haven't done a lot of formal reviews of books. I've really been relegating them to my Friday Reads videos. And there is a reason for that. It's that it's easier for me, less time consuming for me because I have a busy job and my schedule for filming is wildly erratic and all over the place. So to do a specific review, I have to kind of plan and write something out and I don't always have the time to do that. And I also find that people don't tend to enjoy standalone reviews as much as incorporating them into a Friday Reads. So I've been doing a lot more of that. So I don't have a lot of standalone reviews where I really go in depth on something, at least not this year so far. But I really enjoyed doing that Nomadland comparison because I think there's a lot to talk about there and I'm proud of the way it turned out. I do notice that those book versus movie adaptation comparisons don't get a lot of interest from people out there on your end, but that's fine. I enjoy doing them, and I think the only way to really have a channel is to make sure you do a balance of trying to think about what your audience likes and think about what you like doing. So maybe I'm not doing as many standalone reviews and maybe people don't really engage with the book to movie adaptation comparisons as much, but I enjoy doing them and it's something that makes me happy and I'm proud of the way that that one turned out. So if you would like, it's in the description box down below. If you don't wanna watch it, I totally get it, it's fine. Prop number 14, most beautiful book you've bought this year or received. I immediately wanna go with the Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott because, as I said, I even picked this book out specifically because I think the cover is pretty darn stunning and eye-catching and just all around fantastic. But I think, and this is a change because I thought of this as I was filming this video, the actual answer is The Yield by Tara June Lynch because I think it is visually striking, as is The Rain Heron, but there's so much meaning that went into this design where even the negative space means something. And because it's visually striking and ties back to the premise of the book and really sends a message based on that, I think the yield is the answer. So there you go. Prop number 15 is another one I kind of have a problem with because of the way it's phrased. And that's nitpicky, but that's me. Prop number 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? because my immediate stubborn drawback knee-jerk reaction is to say, well, I don't need to read anything by the end of the year. I do this for fun, <laughs> it's not a job. So there's nothing I need to read by the end of the year. There are things I want to read by the end of the year. And to me, that is a very big distinction. However, a lot of the stuff that are on my most anticipated reads or anything like that, I can get to now or I can get to next year. I don't really feel much of a sense of urgency. I do have an answer for this question though, now that I've complained about it a fair amount. And I'm gonna say that I really wanna do another big project for my Pulitzer Prize project and do Gone with the Wind. I had wanted to do this in May and didn't get around to it. So my plan is to do this in July. And if I don't get to it in July, that's fine, but I have chosen this as the next book I want to do for my Pulitzer Prize project. And therefore it is something 
I really want to try to get done before the end of the year. And it's going to be a project because you could hurt somebody with this book. Why would you? I don't know. But you could if you wanted. So we'll see how that goes. It's the only answer I can really fittingly say, given the way that that question is phrased. So that is my mid-year freakout tag for 2021. I'd love to hear if you have thoughts about any of these books or answers to any of these prompts. Please put them in the comment section down below and stay tuned for my best and worst reads of 2021 so far that is coming. I will also have an updated version of my most anticipated reads for 2021, which covers the second half of the year coming up. I also need to wrap up June. I have a lot that I need to do. There's a lot coming up. So if you follow along, thank you. If any of those things sound interesting to you and you don't follow along, hopefully you're interested enough to hit subscribe and follow along on whatever it is I do here. As always, I really appreciate your time, and as always, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.